Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. All right, today we're going to talk about a Canadian cannabis event firm, Lyft. They're filing for bankruptcy. Help us kind of unpack that is Katrina Glugowski, angel investor and attorney. Katrina, thanks for being back on the podcast. Thanks, Josh. So Gontrepreneur uh, has published an article about a Canadian cannabis company filing for bankruptcy. And so, I mean, this happens every day in the normal world, but maybe one of the first times we're kind of seeing it from a publicly traded entity within the cannabis space being an event company called Lyft. We were just up there, uh, I think in January of this year, um, pretty good event, not as big as their uh, event in Toronto, but still Vancouver was a pretty good show. So in terms of their bankruptcy, apparently, and I'm going to quote uh, their, their release here, it says that Lyft & Co. does not have the working capital necessary to repay the amounts owing on the secured convertible debentures or to con continue carrying on its business. As a result, Lyft & Co. has made a voluntary assignment for the benefit of its creditors under Section 49 of the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act of Canada, and all of its directors and officers have resigned. So that's interesting. I think that the resignation is probably because if investors sue, they're suing the board of directors, officers, right? And so is that the reason why they quit? Do you, I mean, I know you have to kind of just guess, you have no idea, but why would somebody quit uh, just for filing bankruptcy? First, Josh, I am not an attorney in Canada. Uh, there might be some statutory reasons for the officers to resign. Uh, it would be fairly unusual, uh, but what, uh, as for a statutory reason uh, to resign, but what this tells me is basically Lyft is no longer. Uh, so the bankruptcy court can, can deal with this themselves. They are not an ongoing entity and don't call them because they're not going to answer. <laughs> So the firm said that its debenture matured on September 10th and it had missed the September 14th deadline for the filing and delivering of its financial statements. So they're saying that this pandemic resulted in a cash flow that essentially ceased. And according to live design survey of live event businesses, 76% indicated that they lost three quarters of their business since March and about 71% of the respondents said that their revenues had fallen three quarters. Lyft obviously was a part of that whole survey and, and lost a bunch of money and said that it's um, not possible to come to an agreement with their creditors that would allow for the sale. So it looks like they're not going to be acquired or maybe they will in, in the bankruptcy uh, proceedings. Somebody might be able to buy them. Not really sure. I guess we'll just kind of have to wait and find out. Well, uh, Josh, I have two comments about this. First of all, Lyft & Co. was a fairly big deal in Canada. Lyft & Co. had an agreement with the Canadian government to educate the general populace about cannabis uh, through, these, through these events and, and other avenues. Uh, and so Lyft had pretty strong backing and that's why they did all these events all over the place. Uh, and there, you and I have been to um, their events. I've been to more than one of their events. They're 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 fairly um, they are probably five hundred vendor booths, a uh, pretty good size. Um, but it's telling that even with the backing of the Canadian government, they couldn't survive this pandemic. And I don't think that this is a, a comment on. Uh, cannabis so much as it is a comment on live events. Uh, th these, you've been to, to several of these where we have uh, an attempt at virtual events and trade shows just do not translate well into the virtual space. So you had the company collapse with with big backers or out without big backers, if you can't actually do what your company is designed to do, you're going to have a problem. Uh, right now, personally, I have my fingers crossed for ICBC um, so that uh, we, we continue to have events in Canada. Um, whether they come out of their bankruptcy, whether they're acquired or, or somebody buys the name to pick it up later, uh, only time will tell. 
But that brings me to my second point where Canada, we always talk about this, Canada has federally legalized cannabis. The United States patently refuses to do so, which we've talked at, about ad nauseum causing a variety of problems. Now, what difference does this really make? Lift and co-filing bankruptcy is an, is an example of a significant difference because cannabis companies in the United States being federally illegal, bankruptcy being a federal law, the cannabis companies in the US are prohibited from filing bankruptcy. They, they can't eliminate the debt, they can't restructure the debt. So Lyft & Co filing bankruptcy in Canada is a luxury that United States businesses, cannabis businesses cannot enjoy. And it'll be interesting if other Canadian cannabis companies uh, fall uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, but you know, economically they don't make it, they can always file bankruptcy. Can't in the United States. Yeah, we just saw Aurora write down another three billion. I mean, they wrote down a billion at least once before, if not twice, and now they wrote down three billion. So we're seeing a lot of money being wasted. Uh, in, in the marketplace and then some companies that just can't stay afloat. Um, and they're not the only ones. Like you mentioned, if it's not an airline or hotel or event center, um, they're all struggling, right? And the events that I've seen this year so far, some have been good and some have been really, really bad um, and, and not great. There isn't anything that's great. And I don't think that's gonna happen until you have a, a complete virtual reality hardware software integration where you're using you know the the oculus or something on your head and you have a complete virtual reality experience otherwise this is kind of like a 16-bit you know old school nintendo or sega i'm seeing 2d stuff i'm just like this is kids that were born in the 90s aren't going to understand those graphics you know they don't get the 2d kind of contra video game zelda kind of thing they don't get that. They're spoiled. And if you try to give them old technology, it's not going to work. I mean, I'm old and I, I still don't like it. <laughs> I'm looking at this <laughs> stuff. I'm like, you guys got to you know, do something better and newer and more creative. Um, so it, it's definitely going to stall the industry. And I think that as events kind of become what we call dirt shows or shit shows, that consolidation is just natural. Like you mentioned, this isn't really all about cannabis, but it is interesting that, that the Canadian cannabis company can file bankruptcy. With uh, other events, like you mentioned, it could be Ocannabiz, that's pretty popular in Toronto that comes in. It could be the International Cannabis Business Conference, uh, ICBC that could come in. It could be a US company that could come in. Um, Canacon seems to be struggling a little bit. Uh, as they kind of fail to grab more market share with Hall of Flowers in California picking up market share and maybe um, Cannabis Lab picking up some, some business niche. We're, we're seeing niche, right? There's Canna Cosmo, uh, you know, Cosmopolitan Beauty, Health and Beauty. Uh, there's the uh, Benzinga uh, Cannabis Capital Conference. There's all of these very niche conferences. And so I think with a federal legalization creating opportunity, maybe that's gonna draw some people in to cross border, don't really know. But I do know that some of these events are terrible. I just don't go to them anymore because they've become um, either pay to play and it's not worth listening to or not enough booths. Um, we saw that uh, people that wanted to to have an event and then just didn't know how to market or advertise and have really low amount of people attending. It's just really not worth it. A lot of events in Portland have gone to the wayside. Seattle doesn't really have any, or Washington State doesn't have any events anymore worth attending, in my opinion. So well, I guess it's just a matter of capitulation, consolidation, but that's opportunities, isn't it? I do see an opportunity, uh, especially Lyft's relationship with the Canadian government uh, and that, uh, let's call it street cred uh, type of thing where uh, that's, what they, that's what Lyft was designed to do, was to educate consumers. Uh, but that also is another telling difference between 
the United States and Canada. Uh, for example, here in Seattle, you can't have uh, actual flour on the floor. You can't have any sampling. Uh, can't touch it, see it, smell it. it it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, that same goes for the retail stores. You have to buy blind. Uh, but in Canada, these big conferences, Lyft, ICB, CO Cannabis, and, and others, uh, what they do is they have industry days and then consumer days because, again, they are floating the mission of educating the consumer. And so the consumer gets to see the exact same booths that the industry folks do. They get to see the technology that's coming just like the industry folks do. And it's very, very difficult to do that in the United States. In Seattle, you have to be, uh, you have to bring your I-502 badge just to get in to mm. some of these conferences, which indicates you're already in the industry and you're not educated. <laughs> So with Lyft filing bankruptcy, M&A consolidation, which we talk about all the time, uh, but this is an opportunity for somebody to um, step in, I guess. <laughs> what, is, what is their company worth? Uh, apparently, they have quite a bit of debt, uh, which was indicated in the article. So Three and a half million dollars in debt is, uh, is a lot, I think, for, isn't it? I mean, it seems like... That seems because Dope Magazine had one uh, two million dollars in debt. High Times has a hundred million dollars in debt. Uh, so three and a half million doesn't seem like a lot, but for an event company, if you're public, um, what do you have debt for? Uh, uh, so I, I, I am not familiar with their bankruptcy filing. I have not read it. So my assumption is that they might owe their shareholders on um, uh, equity notes or uh, convertible notes for investors. Uh, that could be part of their debt. Or if they contracted, say, to have a conference in November and they owe vendors for the conference in November, that is, of course, not now not going to occur. Uh, in some of these conferences, especially big ones, you, you could have several million dollars in debt for, for a conference, uh, especially if you had um, vendors prepay that now you're not going to have a conference. So I can see $3 million in debt uh, for, for an events company, especially a, a, a trade, a publicly traded events company fairly easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just found it interesting. I saw online that Canacon, in fact, was in Oklahoma. And not a lot of people were wearing masks. I mean, there was maybe half, I guess, was wearing a mask. But I just, I found it interesting that uh, in indoors in Oklahoma for cannabis, they're still having physical uh, in-person uh, meetings, but, uh, or conferences, um, seem to be decently attended, but the photos also look like they were taken to, uh, on, on purpose to show that <laughs> rather than just some emptiness. So I don't really know how, how it turned out. I'll find out later on this week. Um, but yeah, maybe there's a U.S. company willing that's still in operations that's willing to go up there and take over, or maybe it's just going to be a normal uh, expansion of the ICBC or um, Ocanabiz or other existing um, conferences that just kind of take over naturally. Right. We'll see. We'll see. But it's bad news for Lyft. I'm so sorry. Uh, I have attended your conferences. I enjoyed them. Mm -hmm. um, but at least you have the luxury of filing bankruptcy and mm -hmm. not paying off that three and a half million dollars in debt in perpetuity because you can't get rid of it. Yeah, wipe out the creditors. Um, and then, you know, just like Burger King, go into private mode figure it out, come up with some, some new burger and then come right back out and be public again. Uh, we saw that with Playboy. Um, the Specialty Purpose Acquisition Corp uh, is utilized by Playboy to kind of go and, and take that inexpensive IPO route. So they were private for a long time and now they're public again. And what changed? Nah, probably nothing except they just wiped out creditors. They're still trying to push a magazine, still trying to go online, maybe still trying to have events. So nothing's really changed from the Playboy uh, bankruptcy IPO perspective. And I don't really think anything will happen uh, differently than with Lyft. They should just kind of kick out those, those creditors, rehire all the people that, that quit, 
uh, and then um, come back online, either private or public. Right. We'll have to come back to the talking hedge and find out. With that, I want to thank my guest, Katrina Gogowski, angel investor and attorney. Thanks for being back on the podcast. Thanks, Josh. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.